Hello and welcome to Real Watchers Movie Club. My name is Garrett. And I'm Kevin. And we are your hosts. Movie Club is a show where we pick a movie every week and discuss it just like a book club. On today's show, we're covering the iconic musical Singing in the Rain. Our thoughts and more coming up on Movie Club. Released in 1952, Singing in the Rain was directed by Stanley Donan and Gene Kelly and stars Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, and Debbie Reynolds. A silent film star falls for a chorus girl just as he and his delusionally jealous screen partner are trying to make the difficult transition to talking pictures in 1920s Hollywood. It is currently ranked 88 on IMDb's Top 250 and currently has a 4.3 out of 5 on Letterboxd and is ranked 111 on its Top 250. It was nominated for two Oscars for Best Score and Best Supporting Actress for Gene Hagen. Before we dive into our thoughts, though, we do want to issue a quick spoiler warning for the film. We will be discussing plot points, twists, revelations, and so much more here on the show. Uh, so if you haven't seen the film yet, go and watch it, because, uh, spoiler alert, it's incredible. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, then come back here and then kind of join in the discussion. You're not going to hurt yeah. our feelings if you pause it and go away. But make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show to find out what movie we're doing next week. Because, as always, it should be a good one. Mm-hmm. All right, Kevin, so this one was my pick this week, and yes, it was. I actually have a fun story about this. That's for why I picked this. I actually, if I remember You're in this I, movie. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I was reborn uh, recently. No, um, I uh, I actually recently rewatched this uh, on our way home from our recent Universal Studios trip, oh. and I was like, okay, you know what? No, we we got to cover this because it's so good, and I'm, I was happy to see that it was on both top 250s because then it kind of falls into place for what we want to do. Um, so I, I'll, I'll just go ahead. That That's that's why I picked it. But the other reason is this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, mm -hmm. I believe, let me double check on my profile real quick on Letterboxd. Uh, it, you I think it is. 50 or my, uh, sorry, my top four on Letterboxd. Mm -hmm. um, but I do kind of cycle those out depending on how I'm feeling. I think I replaced it for Raiders of the Lost Ark recently. But mm -hmm. um, I absolutely love this movie and i know that you had never seen it before and yeah. i was interested to see what you had to say after having watched la la land for the first time because mm -hmm. uh, this is a similar movie to la la land and yep. uh what did you think uh kind of spoiler free before we kind of dive in a little bit more about singing in the rain um very surprised i'm i must be a musical guy because i've liked la la land and this one so um but i was very surprised of how invested i was into this movie and for an early movie sometimes sometimes it gets a little bit slow but um this movie just had me hooked and it was funny i didn't realize how funny it would be i thought it would just be a musical but there are some comedy aspects in it and i i loved it yeah i mean there's come on there's an entire song called make them laugh mm -hmm. or make them laugh yeah like which is a fantastic part of the movie um but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you really enjoyed this because I do think it is, you know, I, I like, I guess the Academy is and like the movie industry is. I'm a sucker for movies about the movie industry because mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm still at that point where like movies are magical and it's just like the, the work, the work that goes into making them is just incredible. And like, so I love to see movies about movies. Yeah. And like, you know, Hollywood and during the golden age and all that kind of stuff, the silent era like this. And it's just, there's so much fun to watch in this movie in particular. Um, Cause there's another similar movie to this that deals with the transition to talking films called the artist, which won the best picture in uh, 2011, 2012, somewhere around there, um, which is very similar in kind of the time period, but it takes mm -hmm. a different tone. This one is the, the probably the, just the best word that I can put to it is charming. Like this yeah. movie, like it it weasels its way into your head and it just makes you smile, and like that is the magic of it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, the it, the aspect of it, you said something. Now I, it just went it went straight out of my head. I was gonna say something, but um, no, it was it was fantastic watching it. Oh, the, about the movies being. <laughs> Yeah, I like movies about movies being made about movies. If that makes sense, uh -huh. because um, it was interesting. I didn't know about this whole part. I thought it was just a musical musical about singing in the rain, but learning about how um, 
to do the voices and everything like that was super, super interesting and intriguing in that way. And that's why I think I gravitated toward towards it more because mm -hmm. of the history behind it. Sure. And I think that the time period is definitely a big part of it, too. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, you're you're seeing an era that we don't really see a lot of today mm -mm. um which is nice because you know we get to see uh like the, the way movies were made back then before talking before that i mean obviously mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a i don't want to say this is a fantasy but there are fantastical elements to it um that kind of add a little bit to the theatricality of the era mm -hmm. um but it just it it does have that charm and that like that sense of history to it, which I, I really appreciate. Yeah. And then, but, and everybody has it, every actor and actress has their own voice in this movie as well. And it really um, creates an ambiance or like a, a, a scene that you're, you're, you know, who everybody is, you don't forget anybody. And some of them are just hilarious. Like when they're trying to put the microphone on her dress and, they can't put it somewhere where she feels comfortable doing it because she's turning away from the mic and then coming back into it. But back then, that's how they would have to like problematic. Like, okay, we can't put it here. You have to put it here. But then how bad she is at it is the, yep. the greatest part about that whole thing. Which leads to the great moment, obviously, at the end where uh, Debbie Reynolds is singing while she's mouthing it. And then, you know, everyone just <laughs> raises the curtains on her. Um mm -hmm. Which is fantastic because I mean that that obviously uh, I forget the name of the character I'm gonna have somebody kill me, uh, Lena Lamont. Um, mm -hmm. She's portrayed by uh, Jean Hagen, who was Academy Award nominated for the role, which makes sense. I mean, you love to hate her, like it's yeah, just, that's her entire purpose in that movie. Um, I, I really would I really would have rather seen I think the Oscar nomination for this movie though go to Donald O'Connor, who plays mm -hmm. um, Gene Kelly's friend uh cosmo yeah absolutely just physically but also like the the level of heart and humor that he brings to the role and to the film really is is fantastic and one of my favorite moments from the entire film which is his sequence make him laugh is perfectly choreographed and mm -hmm. it, it's all due to him and i do think that it's a, a little bit of a disappointment that he wasn't nominated because uh, i did think he deserved it but i, I don't know who else would have been nominated that year if there was anyone better mm -hmm. um but yeah and if, i think you know as far as performances go i think gene kelly is also very good in this movie yeah. um you know obviously there were some behind the scenes drama that happened with this movie uh gene kelly kind of being known as a tyrannical dictator of a director mm. um but you know that doesn't influence the art you know you got to look at the art not the artist and mm -hmm. Um, I think he's fantastic in the movie. Debbie Reynolds is also fantastic in this movie. Yeah. Uh, again, bringing a heart and a charm. And I want to make sure that I'm double, uh, I'm, uh, double check if I'm accurate on this. Yeah, so Debbie Reynolds is actually uh, Carrie Fisher's mom. Oh. Princess Leia. Mm -hmm. So kind of a little bit of a Nepo baby where she gets kind mm -hmm. of an end to the industry. But, uh, you know, uh, she she's also fantastic. Like there's really isn't a weak link cast wise in this book. No, and there really isn't. But I loved how you said the choreography. The choreography in this movie is amazing. And I like I know nowadays where it's like you don't want your actors or actresses to get hurt while doing a number or something like that. But these guys put it out on the line and you can tell that they practiced and rehearsed it and it's nice to see so you know how some movies go portray it from the back of the person when they're dancing so you don't see their face this one does it right in your face they're there you can see that it's the real actor actress and i don't know it looked like to me like they were having a hell of a lot of fun on that on that set just doing the choreography dances and um i just i wish that more actresses and actors could I don't want to say do their own stunts, but like the choreography, it's just like La La Land, how mm -hmm. I knew it was Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling doing the choreography was super, super cool. Yeah, and, and you can tell. And I think that, you know, any musical you watch that has dancing numbers like this in it, you can tell that it is the performers. And that's what I think 
helps the film. And you bring up a really good point of it, of La La Land being similar, right? Because I think that um, of all the musicals that we've gotten recently, right? Uh, I would say that, you know, there's, there's things like The Greatest Showman, uh, which was a huge hit for fans. Um, there's been, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, what other musicals there have been recently. Um, but I don't think any have quite captured the magic of the golden age of Hollywood like mm -hmm. La La Land. And I think that's why the two of these movies are, like, I, it, we, we often talk about doing double features, mm -hmm. easily doing the two of these. Yeah. The magic of the magic of Hollywood is what you call it, and you give the two of them, right? Yeah. Like, it, it, they're, they're, they're so similar, yet you know, being 70 years apart or whatever, um, that mm -hmm. it's crazy. But, you know, speaking of choreography, speaking of putting it all on the line, we got to talk about the iconic moment from the movie, which is the singing in the rain sequence. Yep. Which, you know, I often talk about how there are moments in film that are like the best like the reason why film continues to exist, I guess you could say, right? Mm -hmm. Like the things that have pushed the need, like the shots, the moments, the thematic elements, the emotional weight that have pushed the medium forward. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, you've, like, you've got things like the Wizard of Oz when it goes to, it's like black and white pseudo colors to full color is an incredible mm -hmm. moment like that. I, I don't care who argues against me. I think the portal sequence from Avengers Endgame is one yep. of the greatest moments in, in cinema history. This is also there. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just so goddamn magical and just mm -hmm. fun. And it embodies the spirit of the film. Um, yep. So it's just, it's fantastic. Gene Kelly, which I don't know if you knew this, but the entire filming of that sequence where he's in the rain, splashing in puddles, getting all wet, he had a 103 degree fever during the filming of that sequence. And he performed like that? Yep. Hey, that's that's an actor right there. And that's you a, got a film on the day when you got it. Exactly. And was that <laughs> was that shot in the studio back lot, though? Because I believe that was really... shot in a probably in a, uh, a sound stage. Let me double check that because it looked like when we went to Universal, I was like, it's a, those buildings look familiar, but I don't, I don't, I don't remember if it was, but to go off of you. Yeah. I thought, I thought this song would actually come up more towards the beginning of the movie, but it was kind of nice how it was towards the end when you get to see everything come into fruition and see his character change as well, um, sure. which he's, He's not really happy at the beginning, I I would say, and then at the end when he finds uh, Debbie, it's not what is it Debbie Ryan? Uh, Debbie Reynolds. Reynolds, Debbie Reynolds, and he kind of finds like his spark again, and then that's when they play the singing in the rain, and you can tell that he is having fun with it and he's enjoying it a lot more. And I just. I love the choreography as well in this one. And he, again, looks like he's having fun, even though he probably wasn't. But <laughs> yeah, it's um, it, it, it is it, it's such a good moment. Uh, and, mm -hmm. I, and I did just check it was filmed at MGM Studios, which oh, okay. MGM is the studio that you watch for these kinds of movies, like these grand sweeping musicals. There's a couple of other musicals that Gene Kelly has been in that I'm really excited to check out. Things like An American in Paris um, hmm. that are just more like this. Obviously, I don't think they're as well regarded as Singing in the Rain, which is hmm. travesty. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, any of these old musicals are going to be fantastic. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's it's such a it's just such a fun moment. I, and, I, and I know I keep talking about it and you know kind of saying the same things over and over again but it just really truly is just like even the most cynical person i feel can walk into that moment and leave with a smile on their face yeah it, it mm -hmm. just raises your spirits and you know like the same with make them laugh you mm -hmm. know like the the speaking uh, i forget the name of the song but like when they're ewing over like the speaking exercises Oh uh, yeah, which is also like linguistically, I don't know how they were able to do that. It probably mm -hmm. took forever to get, but um, all of that does lead to kind of like the grand spectacle, which is the entire 
kind of like this is how we're going to end the dancing cavalier and yeah. i i gotta admit i think that the the bit where they're kind of going over everything that happens in the dancing cavalier and all those like you know like just he's in the club dancing with the woman and then he's out in like broadway or broadway melody i think is what the song's called where he's out dancing mm-hmm. the streets of broadway i think that goes on just a little too long yeah, I can I can see that. Especially, it it looked like a, like a kind of a fever dream, is what I yeah. Which is which is what it. the which is what the film is that they're, they're yeah. saying, right? That he's out there, he gets hit on the head and goes back in time, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know that. I I get it, but I do think that the the musical like the dancing sequences go on just a little too long. But mm-hmm. they're again they're so well choreographed, they're so well performed, and it's just so much fun to watch that. Yeah, it may go on an extra five minutes than more than you'd like it to, but man, it's, it's kind so it's pretty, it's, and it's telling a story too. So, yeah. and it's trying to finish the story at the end because this is the end of the movie, pretty much. So, mm-hmm. but um, I, I was going to say something and I forgot again. Wow, I'm really good at this today. <laughs> um, it's all good. Uh, I, I was going to say, I would probably prefer people who haven't seen musicals to watch this one over la la land though because of how really? more more there's more comedic relief in this one than there is in la la land um it, sure. la la land's not serious but it, it has serious things but it also teaches you the history of movies of in singing in the rain and then you get the comedic relief and you get to see all the characters develop and I, I mean, I'd watch this again. So, yeah, I, I love this movie. I I I own it uh, on like several different ways. I think I have a DVD. I think I have like the 4K remaster that came out recently. Mm-hmm. Like this movie, I love. I could probably watch this movie once or twice a year. Oh and, yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, just because it's like it started out like one of those things. I remember, um, like you know, I remember. Thinking, I think the first time I watched this was in like high school when I was in my like super edgy phase, right? Like it has to be violent, dark, gritty movies that are the best, like Mm -hmm. Watchmen's the best movie ever made, things like that, right? I guess you could say when I was a Zack Snyder type of person, right? (laughs) Um, But like, even then this movie broke through and I really enjoyed it when I was even younger. And Mm -hmm. that that love and that passion for the film has just grown over time and it's been, just it's it's just so fantastic it's one of those movies like i can watch it with my mom i can watch it with anyone like Mm -hmm. it's it's really hard to find someone that doesn't like the film i mean obviously you're gonna find people who don't like you know like any it's it's hard to like a film but it's also another thing that to enjoy a film you're not gonna necessarily not like a film like not naughty and i Nadia likes movies that you don't like, but you would enjoy a movie like Frankenhooker, like because it's funny. You enjoy it, but it's not like a cynical masterpiece. Cynical? You mean C- cinematic? C- C- cinematic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I just think the movies, it, it's so damn good. It, it's really hard to uh, kind of properly vocalize why. I, I enjoy it so much. I think it is just the professionalism on display. It is the choreography. It's the songs. The songs are fun. And like, granted, mm-hmm. some of them don't need to be there, right? No. I, I, I'm the first one to point out when a musical is stupid and like, you know, puts in songs that have no right to be there. Like in mm-hmm. any other movie, I'd be like, yeah, the whole like speech linguistics practice thing doesn't need to be in the movie but you know what it's mixed with dancing and it's just like but it's also just throws on you but it's also teaching her how to speak because of her high-pitched voice so you understand why she's going through this training because i was speaking about the the song and dance sequence with gene kelly and donald o'connor oh okay yeah like that that song in any other movie i'd be like why is that there it's just wasting time yeah it's like no it just works like i don't know and it's kind of seeing both sides the uh, when the female was doing the vocalist and then oh, okay let's show the male do the vocalist but he's better at it so let's make him sing it mm-hmm. and make him emphasize that he he already knows how to do this pretty much so that's what i got out of it so i didn't mind it um but it was it was enjoyable like every little thing every 
musical piece was enjoyable to me and it didn't feel like it was forced in yeah nothing ever feels like it's forced i mean even even the stuff that goes on a little too long at the end mm -hmm. like you're, it, it, you're you're seeing the movie as they would have made it so it's just in color obviously but like you know it, it is it, yeah it's just it, it's just fun and that's it and is. that's the whole reason you watch the movie mm -hmm. all right kevin so this, since this was my pick this week we'll have you, you go ahead and go first what um, did you think of yeah, so, final thoughts uh final thoughts singing in the rain is a 100 out of 100 for me uh must see movie if you have not seen it already because it does like you said it has that charm to it that um a lot of movies sometimes over overthink the charm i feel like they just say here let's push lovey-dovey stuff this one doesn't push it too much as well um but the actors actresses perform in this movie and it looks amazing when they perform and uh the song and dance is incredible in this movie and even every like if i watch this again i'll probably see something else that i didn't see before so um i will be probably watching this again um but definitely if you haven't seen a musical and you want kind of on the edge i would say go see, watch singing in the rain to see if you like it because of the comedic relief in it yeah it, it I, I do agree this is the movie that you you request you not, not request you recommend to people who are looking for something good to watch and don't want to have something that's depressing or dark or violent or something this is the movie that i will always recommend mm -hmm, exactly um for me i think this movie is like the best way i can describe it is, it is a hollywood fantasy in that mm -hmm. it is not super like it's not magical like like arcane magic right but it's just like the charm and the kind of the the magnetism that comes off the screen is so good it, mm -hmm. It's just, it, it is uh, a nearly flawless movie. I do think the only flaw is that some parts towards the end with the Broadway melody sequence can go on a little too long, overstay its welcome just a little bit, um, but you do get to see incredible choreography and just performances dancing-wise, physically. It's fantastic. And so mm -hmm. being one of my favorite movies of all time, I do give it a 97 out of 100, um, and it's a four and a half stars out of five on Letterboxd. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I fucking love this movie. Yep. So the question now falls to you. What do you think of Singing in the Rain? We'd love to hear what you have. Think about it down in the comment section down below. But remember to be respectful to one another because one of you could be the studio head that might fire you. Next week, we'll be covering the animated family film Inside Out, which is actually getting a sequel pretty quick here in theaters. So make sure to uh, be subscribed so you're there when the new video goes live. And again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. And we have our live stream that goes live every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And, of course, Movie Club goes live every Friday at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so you have it right in time for your morning commute to wherever you're going. Um, and as you said, next week, Inside Out, which is going to be a good one. So mm -hmm. until next time, make sure to keep those eyes on the screen.